Um, may I ask? Sure. Um, this is my son. I lost my two sons in this pandemic. 34 and 36 years old, but those lives don't seem to matter. Do you mind talking to the camera? Not at all. Um, and it was... It was no, it was overdoses. They were poisoned with fentanyl. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, if, you, if you don't want to identify yourself, uh, you don't have to. I'm just going to give you the camera. Uh, this, so is, this is my son, Jake. He was 34 years old. He died January 1st, New Year's Day of 21. Um, his little girl turned a year old Christmas Eve. He died home of a fentanyl overdose. Um, his cocaine was poisoned with fentanyl. He had been in recovery. He had been working. He had been having a really good year for the, one of the best years he'd had in a long time. And then these shutdowns came along and uh, no more work, no more gyms, no more uh, AA meetings. And on top of all of that, the medicine he was using was made illegal. Ibogaine, something that cures addiction in the middle of a pandemic the liberal government made it illegal and he died. Seven months later, I lost my older son, 36 years old, the same thing, a fentanyl overdose. His job was gone, couldn't leave the house. Like this is what this is what Trudeau has done. This is what these lockdowns have done. So, you know, I gave up my two sons and I have people who want me to wear a mask. Well, when you want to give up two sons, I'll put on a mask for you. Until then, I'm not wearing a mask or injecting myself with anything. I'm going to do me from here on in. I want the government the hell out of my life. They murdered my children. And all of you that supported these lockdowns, you just have blood on your hands. Blood. Every one of them should be charged. They need to be charged. I'd like to give a message to the people of Ottawa. To the people of Ottawa, all of you that have been supporting us, and there have been many, 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 from the bottom of my heart, I say thank you. And to all of the ones of you that have been annoyed at me coming to my capital city and are annoyed by the horns, well, when we leave, the horns will leave and your life will go back to normal. My life will never go back to normal. My life has been changed and altered forever. You're staying for the long haul? The long haul. I drove here from Calgary and I'm not leaving till it's over. What, what, what do I have to lose? I go with my sons. I don't want to live on, in a communist country. I would rather die here on the streets of Calgary than live in a communist country or to see my children grow up into this oppression. You know, all the money that this government takes from us in taxes, you know, this carbon tax, that is highway robbery. How the hell is me paying $30 more to fill up my gas going to protect the environment? You know, they, and not only that, what few dollars he leaves in your pocket, now he's going to tell you who you can give it to, what you can do with it. How's that a free country? Tells us what to inject in our bodies, what to put over our faces, and what money he doesn't steal from us, who we can give it to. What's some... Um, what's your name? Pardon? What's your name? I don't want to... Devin Wong. Devin Wong? Oh, I don't know. I don't give a fuck who knows my name. The whole world can know my name. I don't care. What are you going to do to me? You know, these police, they, they contribute to this. They contribute to this. They beat up drug addicts. They treat them like shit. They treat their families like shit. You know, I, I had the police tell me I was a horrible mother because I stuck by my sons. You know, they tell us about this tough love. We need to be tough. We need to be tough with our children who are so broken that they have to take these horrible drugs to get out of their pain. What is supposed to be tough about love? Is love not supposed to be kind, gentle, forgiving, caring? Look, isn't that what love is supposed to be? But this government has even changed. Not only have they changed the definition of vaccines, they've changed the definition of love. In order to love your children, we're expected to throw them out, kick them in the teeth when they're down. 
what kind of a decent humane society says that something is a disease addiction it's a disease that has been in our medical books now for decades and when they get these diseased people what do they do with them they throw them into prisons to be tortured by guards be sold drugs by guards we know this we know this what's being done about it you know my daughter made a speech on the streets of calgary for overdose awareness and she told those people they tell you the system is broken she said make no mistake the system is not broken it's working exactly the way they want it to work the jails are full the hospitals are full they're selling prescription uh, drugs like they're smarties it's not broken the rich is getting richer and we're getting poorer and sicker what disease do they cure they don't cure diabetes they don't cure cancer what, what is it they cure? You, you go to them, you're depressed. They give you a medication that the warnings are suicidal thoughts, homicidal thoughts. You gain 40 pounds. You can't have an orgasm. You no longer have a short-term memory. And now you should be happy. That's a pill to make you happy. This world's got to change. We need the blue collar workers running this country. These truckers pull this shit together in a couple of weeks. People have never met, felt more safe, more secure, more loved, more at home. People on the streets feel at home. You know, the, 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 the crime rate has gone down 90% in Ottawa. So what do they do? They call in police from all over the country to pay them with your hard earned tax dollars to guard a bunch of free freedom lovers and, and then they want and then they want to charge the convoy for the cost of its of the cost of their police that they brought down yes meanwhile they're feeding the homeless you don't see the homeless anywhere uh wandering around by themselves anymore they're all here with us all here with us i am I don't want to see another mother go through what I'm going through. Clip away and share away, people. Uh, I would say sometimes be careful what you clip away because some clips on some channels YouTube has a problem with and other clips on other channels they don't. The AI bot doesn't always work well nor does the manual review, but clip and share, because I can't do all of it. And uh, I clipped some highlights, but uh, clip and share. That is uh, among, it, it's, so, so you may not, you, there's heartbreak that you can see um, in, in the eyes. The eyes are the window to the soul. And that is, um, anyhow, I'm here, I'm gonna point this way and uh, warm up my hands for a second. In the, in the in the it was last year by the way fake news cbc ran a story that said and the headline you can google it experts experts thought suicide rates would spike during the pandemic early data shows it's actually gone down you can call this confirmation bias or stubbornness on my part no one is ever going to convince me that suicide rates went down during the pandemic ever period period when distress calls to hotlines are up 100 to 200 percent no one is going to convince me that by some miracle by some statistical anomaly anomaly suicide rates actually went down uh, i didn't believe the article when i read it i especially didn't believe it because sometimes it takes many months to determine causes of death and so it was even premature to make that idiotic conclusion statement that suicide rates during a time of pandemic global distress social isolation that it went down preposterous and untenable on its face but maybe i'm stubborn especially since if you're not counting overdoses in that 
Uh, I think that's an inaccurate way. Have a good day, Viva. Thank you very much, you too. I saw that guy. Um, if you're not counting overdoses, you're not counting it properly. Uh, and if you want to minimize your number for suicides, very easy way, chalk it up to overdose. So it's not a suicide, it's an overdose. Distress deaths is what you would have to measure in order to appreciate the impact that these measures have had on the young, younger demographics over the last two years. And I'm not sharing any personal anecdotes, but I've got more personal anecdotes to share in that sense than about something's going on here than in the other sense. Oh, and by the way, now that they are actually finding, you know, coming to the conclusion that suicide rates did in fact go up substantially among the younger demographics. And, you know, when you're dealing with um, uh, life expectancy going down in the United States in some demographics, three and a half years, uh, the life expectancy doesn't necessarily go down that much because the older population is dying and we know the average age of a COVID death. Uh, it goes down radically because younger portions of the population are dying and therefore dragging down that number faster.